Uh, now we're going to talk about the chord family template. Chords uh, are derived from the notes of a scale uh, within a particular key. Okay, so uh, when we build, say, the key of C, if we took the first note of C, we can build a C major chord on it. All right, from uh, the key of C, you go you skip every other note of the scale. So the scale is C D E F G A B C. We want C, skip D, go to E, skip F, go to G, C, E, and G, create the C major triad. The same happens with the second step of the C scale. We get D, skip a note, go to F, D, E, F, skip a note, go to A, F, G, A. So we have D, F, A. Mm -hmm. If you were to analyze those two chords, or, uh, I'm not going to go into the specific details, but if you were to analyze those two chords, there's a difference in the distance between the root and the third. The, the, the first note and the second note of the chord, okay? That's uh, called the root, the third, and the third note is called the fifth, by the way. The, the distance, if you could picture like a, a triangle, all right? Uh, if, here's my C, here's my E, and here's my G, okay? Now, the, the distance between C and E kind of skews the triangle in this way because it's a large distance, and then down to G, all right? But on the D minor chord, the distance between the D and the F that skews the triangle this way, so there's a shorter distance between D and F, the root and the third. Okay. This, basically, there's a formula for this, you know, um, we won't go into it, but basically, uh, well, I'll say it real fast. Uh, the, the major chord, the formula is the root to the third for a major chord is two whole steps, all right? And if you look at the C scale, we don't have a C scale here. Let me just write out real quick. Where was I going? If, uh, if you look at the C scale, we get C, skip one, E, skip one, G, all right? right? The distance between C and E is two whole steps, whole, full, all right? right? That's according to the whole step, half step formula. Remember, it sits perfectly for the key of C. You don't have to tweak anything. Right. Now, if I go D, F, A, and create this chord, here's my beginning note, skip one, middle note, skip one, root, third, fifth. The distance here, is step, whole step, and E and F is a half step. So there are minor chords and major chords that come out of this, okay? So now what we're doing with the chord family template is we're taking a key and determining the row of major and minor chords within it. And the formula is always the same across the board for every key, all right? So what we have here are a set of Roman numerals, all right? And, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, if we were to look here, that corresponds with do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. The only difference is we're piling on other notes of the scale in order to create a chord from do, piling on notes to create re. The uppercase Roman numerals mean that the chord is major. The lowercase means that the chord is minor. Mm -hmm. This is going to be true for any key, all right? Mm -hmm. This also follows the whole step, half step formula. There's a whole step between one and two chords, okay? Why? Because this is where this was built on Do and this was built on Re. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole step between those two, so on and so forth. As we progress up the scale, we have the four chord, which is major, the five chord, which is major, but I put in parentheses seven. It could also be a dominant seventh chord, where we drop another third on top of that. Finally, uh, we have La, which is minor, and T, this is the only chord that is neither major or minor, it's diminished, and really what it does is it, it connects really to this chord. This chord is G, B, D, F, if you want to make it seven. This chord is B, D, F. Okay. All right, G, B, D, F, B, D, F. All right, if you were to put a G underneath this chord, it would become G7. Okay. This chord has no root because it has a broken fifth in it. Okay, so we put in parentheses. Now, what do you call e, e It's a diminished chord. Diminished, okay. Yeah, the little circle means diminished. Thanks for asking. So a seventh, a seventh chord is always going to be a diminished chord? A seventh chord will contain a diminished chord on top of its root. Okay. All right, so G7, <coughs> the G is, <coughs> pardon me, the root, BDF is this little diminished chord that sits on top of it. Okay. But because this root is so weak, if I were to play this chord and somebody sounded a G, they would. This would be, be instantly become G7. Yeah. They would draw the root out of it. This has no root. Okay. And by the way, I mean this is a side note for you, Steve. Is the modes correspond to these things? Yeah. 
And I've always said the mode sitting in this position is the weakest root. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right? All right. So, so far, we're good. Yeah. Now, if I turn the board over, what we have is we extrapolated our key of D before. We got D, E, F sharp, G. Well, this is kind of fuzzing out, but D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. All right? Thank you. Your, your sleeve array, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to have a polka dot shirt here. Yeah. All right, so now the step is, in order to find the chords of a key, you build your key. Then you place it on your template underneath the Roman numerals. Okay. What the key, the, s the chords of the key of D are D major, uppercase, Roman numeral, right. E minor, right. F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, and C sharp diminished. Okay. We eliminate this and call these the six usable chords because this, again, is, is more closely related to uh, the seven. A7 chord. Okay. All right, so you could take any key, build it, Put it underneath the template. Now you have the chords that belong to the key. Let's demo. Let's demo this by hearing it. Okay. Okay. So we have D, D, E minor, F sharp minor, A, A, R, A seven, B minor. Okay. So. Uh, And from that, gazillions of songs have been built. Okay. All right. Um, now I'm going to say so I'm going to make a side note. I, I use the terms generic and specific. When we look at the key of D, we have the names of, of the chords: D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A7 or A major, and B minor. That's specific. That's the specific names of those chords. Okay. Then we have generic: one, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six, seven. All right. All right. Since this relationship, all right, exists inside all the different keys, okay, the relationship of one to two is always a half step. The one chord is always going to be major no matter what key we put under here. Okay. It's always the same pattern. This is the underlying pattern. So uh, to demo what this means, if I took one, four, and five in the key of D, I get D, G, and A. Right. If I took one, four, and five in the key of C, I'd get C, F, and G. All right, well, let's hear 1, 4, 5, and D, and 1, 4, 5, and C, and let's see what happens. Okay. We get D, 1, is uh, in the key of D, D is 1, G is 4, A is 5. So I'm going to go 1, 4, 5, 4, 1. Now what you get, and I've said this a gazillion times, but what you get here is wild thing, or uh, La Bama. Or Louis Louis. Yeah. Or Twist and Shout. <laughs> all right, all a thousand songs of the moon. One, four, five, four. Okay. Now let's do that and see and see if it should sound the same if the relationships are the same between one, four, and five. Okay. In the key of D, they should be the same in C. So let's check. Let's see if I can sing. Wow. Yeah, it does work. Or a twist. Let's sh shake it up, baby, now. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum. You know. Uh, All right. Let's call the angel of the morning. There's ah. a million songs. A yeah. million, a million. And this isn't just, uh, you know, relegated to early 60s. There are guys writing songs now that are using this, too. Yeah. And they're reinventing the wheel. Because the, the, the wheel was destroyed and broken during the 90s and now these guys are picking up guitars and they're going wow I like this chord progression sounds old school sounds vintage ah, okay. all right so uh, so that's what's happening the, the wheel is being reinvented this is why a lot of modern songwriters should really pay heed to this kind of stuff all right so what we did was we eliminate a whole bunch of hunting and pecking now I'm going to ask you Steve just pick three chords out of here arbitrary I don't care what uh, just any three any three uh, two, four, and and six. All right, two, four, and six. So we have E minor, <coughs> G, and B minor. Now let's say I want to write a song. Yeah. All right. See, that's not offensive. That's D 
these will always work together. It's like uh, uh, monochromatic tone, uh, colors. They'll okay. always, they'll, they're in the same family, so they will work together. Yeah. And by the way, monochromatic kind of works in a way when we use that term because um, when you see that there's more chords you could write into a song besides the stuff on the template. You can borrow from other keys if you know the rules and the laws right. of, of, of this, right? That's for later. But for now, we can say this much that, you know, a real basic, basic piece of music is based on just this, no outside chords from other keys. You're just messing with these six chords. And mind you, thousands of songs have been written uh, using this progression. I consider it kind of plain vanilla because there's no surprises in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, it basically, we think about it, you know, the matrix of all these chords here is one particular scale, in this case D major. Right. Right? So if that's the case, we're not going to hear many surprises. Well, vocally, you could throw in some surprises. You could surprise, yes, absolutely you could. Yeah. Yeah, vocally you could. Or harmonically you could when you get more advanced. you maybe, you know, you could also maybe, I suppose. But. Okay, now here's the other thing. All musicians everywhere, I don't care how advanced or how a beginner, a key is a collection of notes that are related together by the whole step, half step formula. All right? That doesn't mean that the name of the key, like C or D, that doesn't mean that's the root chord in a chord progression that you create from that key. You could put a root in any one of the chords of the key. There are four really strong roots and three weak ones, all right? Uh, we, we'll go into that in the future, the four okay. most commonly m used modes. When you create a root on, on the notes, uh, when you ca create a root, say here, mm -hmm. all right, there's a name for when your chord progression keeps coming around back to E minor. And let me create one. I'm going to go E minor G A, all right? Okay. Um, so I get E minor G A. Now you can hear our roots to the E minor. That's one of the stronger modes, so we'll have a decent root. Um, so what happened? I, I took chords out of the key of D, but mm -hmm. I had an E minor root. Now, one of the mistakes that's commonly made amongst musicians is if I were to walk into a room and people are playing E minor, G, and A, and I'm picking up a guitar, and I go, what key are you guys in? They'll say E minor. Yeah. It's not literally true. Right? What's literally true is that this is E Dorian. E, what Dorian simply means is you've created a root on the second step of the scale. That is the <coughs> Greek name. Each one of these roots has a different Greek name. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Okay? That's that. Okay? That's, that's what the modes are. Okay. Okay? The modes are created by chords, not scales. Now, what happens, say, in that last little demonstration? We had E minor being sort of pulled back to an E minor, it was, it was the way we hear things. What happens when you start throwing a D in? Oh, that's a good question, because it may have a stronger root, right? Yeah. Yeah, so if I go... It depends on how you use it, all right? If you s what creates root is how long you sit on a chord, and also... It's whether it's, again, I have a chart, we're going to go into it, but a chart of the four strongest roots inside of the key. Right. Just right off the bat, I'll tell you. The one, the two, the five, and the six. Okay. Those are the strongest roots you're going to get. Three and four are very weak. It's hard to hold a root there. Okay. And in fact, if you were to analyze 99% of pop music, you'd get a root in the one, the two, the five, or the six. Okay. All right? When you go into jazz and you want obscurity, then you use the three and the four or the seven. Any example of uh, a jazz player that, that would work in one of those weak? Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, I don't I, mean to put you on the spot here. I wish I, uh, you know, I should have a ready example, but I don't. But I, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate there's a chord uh, called a Lydian chord. You can actually encapsulate the Lydian mode in one chord. It's a major 7 chord, G major 7 in this case. All right, but I'm going to flat the fifth, which makes this Lydian. Oh, All right. Okay. Now, as soon as I do that, I get this kind of vague, wh what is the root? And what jazz guys like to do is move chords like this around. Okay. And you get, it's a sun or a sound. It sounds nice yeah. enough, you know. Yeah. But it's vague. You know, it's like, where is the root? Who, what am I coming home to? Is this one? Yeah. Is that, oh, am I relaxed here? Is this the ending chord of the song? So that, that's Lydian. That's a Lydian example. Okay. okay. 
Is that also, so, I don't know, this is just in my ear, is that also something where it's hard to anticipate where something's going to go from it? Yeah. As over yeah. against uh, I, right. cowboy chords would be the the biggest right. example. Right. So and like, again, we, in that case, we're dealing with vertical harmony because we're taking a chord and tweaking its elements. Okay. Right? Hang on one second. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between root and key. I teach this to my students. Uh, key is just a collection of notes that are drawn together because of the whole step, half step formula using the three step system okay. I gave you. Those notes belong together. But here's one thing I propose to, you know, if, if I had an influence in academia, I'd say, all right, don't call the key of D the key of D. Because that biases the mind that D is going to be the root. Okay. And this is the mistake that's made when you walk into a room and say, what key are you guys in? They say E minor. minor. All right? It's not the key of E minor. The key of E minor belongs to G. These chords belong to D. All right? So there's a mistake. The, the way to accurately say it is that we're, we're, you know, we're an E Dorian. That would clear it up immediately. Oh, okay. So okay. you would not say an E minor uh, key of D or anything like that. You right. just go E Dorian. Right, E Dorian. And uh, they would know a trained that's musician the first knows. step up. And so, so you're right. really in the key of D. Right. But, okay. Right. All right. And in fact... You could play any of the seven, if for more advanced musicians, you could play any of the seven modes of the key of D. You could play D Ionian, E Dorian, F sharp, uh, Phrygian, up through all of them, and they will all become one mode because the chord progression is rooting you to E minor. All seven of those modes, no matter how you play them, mm -hmm. are going to be rooted as E Dorian modes. Okay. Okay? So, that's that for that, all right? Uh, so we have root versus key. Now, the next step we have to take is, how do we do this really easy where you don't have to think, okay? Okay. And that's under the presumption that you're a guitar player that knows how to use bar chords, we're going to have a real easy uh, system of pure enlightenment toward uh, understanding oh, these six chords of any key, all right? So let's take a little break here. Okay. And, uh,